My name is George Bassett, and I'll be your instructor in this class on the Great War, the First World War in Europe. Um, in one way or another, I've been studying the Great War since I was a middle schooler. Um, I had to do a, do a project, a diorama, um, and I chose to do a trench scene. And I had a great big wood box, and I had done up with my little toy soldiers uh, a model of a trench. And I was so proud because my grandfather, who was a World War I veteran, came over, and I was eager to take him out and show him. And uh, he said, oh, no, no, Georgie, Georgie, you have it all wrong. And he proceeded to tear apart my trench system and redo it properly. Um, I've got to say that since then, I mean, there has been no stopping. Um, I started with uh, Barbara Tuckman's um, The Guns of August, and I've been rolling ever since. Now, I do this because I love my grandfather, but also because the Great War was a turning point in human history. In 1914, Europe controlled the globe in the form of empires, through military, secure, uh, through military supremacy, through um, a network of, of, of interconnected economic links through the gold standard. European culture dominated the globe. It was a Eurocentric world. And the United States played in some ways a rising but very much a peripheral part and the United States was part of this European world. After four years of terrible bloodletting and terrible uh, loss of life and fortune, the center of global economic power had shifted from London to New York. The great empires are, were either disestablished or tremendously weakened um, the British Empire will ultimately come on glued after 1945, but its days are already numbered after 1918. Um, that European global hegemony is beginning to disappear. It doesn't disappear immediately, but it's clear the way things were going. So this is a tremendously important economic event, social event, and I think you'll find as well a cultural event. Now, how do I organize this class? This class is organized into 14 weekly modules. You can either follow along what I'm going to say on Miami's internal learning management system or through my Great War blog. Okay. Now, we have three sources, the three texts that we will all read for this class. Hugh Strachan, The First World War, Annika Mombauer, The Origins of the First World War, and uh, Eric Remark, All Quiet on the Western Front. Now those are the basic assigned readings. You should purchase these books and uh, do the weekly assignment, read the weekly assignments in them. We will also be reading a number of sources that I have linked through either through Open Library um, in other ways on uh, the internet and you'll find all of these listed on my blog. Okay, So there's a lot of reading. There's also going to be a significant amount of writing. Every module, every week, after you have read the text, either after you have looked on, after you have watched some videos, after you have looked on the internet, uh, you will participate in a discussion board. And I have anywhere from three to six discussion prompts for each, uh, for each module. If you are a Miami student working within the learning management system, you'll see the links out of the module into those discussion, onto those discussion boards. If you are following along on my Great War blog, I have set up a Wikispaces site so that we, you can participate as well. Now, these discussion boards are synchronous um, to the extent that the work within each module needs to be discussed within that week. Um, for those of you who are following the course in an asynchronous fashion on the web, um, I look at the discussions and I carry out the discussions in another format. So don't worry about that. That will become quite clear. Um, so you'll, you'll be doing uh, discussions and you'll also be writing, after you've completed all of this, you'll be doing a weekly essay. I have 
two or three prompts at the end where you reflect upon the material that you have read, that you have watched, that you have discussed. And so tying it all at the end into a nice little package. We have a two-week module on the Great War and Culture in which I look at art and artists and changes in the cultural landscape. That is one we'll be reading All Quiet on the Western Front. I also have uh, small selections that you'll be reading in conjunction with this um, Ernst, from Jernst Junger's Im Stahlgewitter in Storm of Steel and from Henri Barbus, um, Le Foy or The Fire. Uh, so two post-war um, war novels that I think are very important in some ways uh, more important than All Quiet on the Western Front. Um, so we'll be looking at that. We'll be looking a lot at, at, at uh, the war poets, at the English war poets. Um, I have an Oxford Digital War Poet, uh, war poet Digital Archive link, so we're going to be doing a lot of that. Things should be very interesting. There are two other aspects of this class for you to know about. Um, we're going to be doing what I've labeled a Veterans Project in conjunction with the Butler County Historical Society and Lane Public Library, um, each of you in the regular class will be adopting uh, someone from Butler County who perished during the war. And your job will be to um, identify who they were, where they went to, how old they were when they enlisted, where they went to school, where they, in what unit they served, um, where they fell. And so if you look at my blog, you'll see the right-hand viewing pane. I have Great War veterans. There's a picture of my grandfather in his uh, First Division uniform. Um, I hope to be able to populate the um, this Flickr site with um, our veterans. Um, and so I think this will be sort of an interesting bit of commemoration and memorial. I'm following a lot of units and small groups in Great Britain who are doing this locally with their own veterans and I think we can replicate this really really nicely and it'll be an important resource and an important commemoration of the people who gave their lives. And that will be worth 15 percent of your grade, the Veterans Project. Also I hope that for everyone participating in this class that you will become an expert on some aspect of the Great War. Um, and I'm calling these extensions. So whether it's a military history, cultural history, social history, you will have the opportunity to look at different aspects and truly become an expert on some aspect of the war. Now, everyone will have a different, a different project. Um, these are individual, not group projects. Everybody will have a different project. Um, I have full documentation on the site explaining how we go through selecting these and working on them, again using wiki spaces both for the Miami students and for the uh, non-Miami people taking this class where, we're, where I'll be able to shepherd you through as you create your extension. Um, since my goal is to run this course for the five years of the war from 19 from 2014 through uh, 2018, um, we should by the time that the war, the commemoration this of the centenary is done, have really quite a large project. I'm also working into this. It is not yet. I will be creating a series of of webinars with specialists who, in various aspects of the war. And if you are, these will have to schedule these at some point in time. If you are not able to participate directly in the webinar at the given time, because this is an online class, I can't expect that of you, the, these webinars will be posted on YouTube and you'll be able to access them. And if you can't ask the specialist directly a question, you can at least watch and share in our discussion. So that's the way I've organized the class. I think it's going to be absolutely it's going to be absolutely over the top, if you'll excuse my expression. Um, it's going to I think it's going to be something that you are going to come out of having learned a lot and having enjoyed the experience.
Thank you.